So the question is, how should we be bussing our amps in within our DAWs? How should you deal with woofy low end? And what do you do if you have to mix multiple bass guitars together within the same mix? Welcome to Viewer Questions Answered, episode 22. So without any further ado, let's get to this excellent group of questions submitted by subscribers. And the first question here comes from Cam. Hey Bobby, we're going to track bass guitar in a couple of weeks using three different basses, a P bass, a fretless jazz bass, as well as a Rickenbacker 4003. Some songs will feature all three basses, some will feature only a single bass. Since your tips for mic setup on drums, especially cymbals, paid off so hard for us, I was wondering if you had any advice for how to EQ these three basses together, or just general ideas on how to achieve a blend that won't be too jarring when we switch from, say, a mid rangey P bass tone to a deeper Rickenbacker tone during a song. What I've got set up now is a track for each of the basses, all bust to a single fader, the way that you do in your Frightbox videos for rhythm guitars, and all basses are going in DI. We're just going to screw around with it, but any advice or even just conjecture would be appreciated. Thanks for making these videos. They've helped us a ton so far. Cam. So Cam, I just want to say I'm so happy to hear that these videos have been helpful. And I do have a few quick ideas for you. If you're mixing multiple bass guitars together, we have to remember that generally bass guitar is going to be sitting pretty low as far as the range in the frequency spectrum. So we're talking the sub range here. And in my opinion, in my experience, you can't have too many instruments sitting in that sub range. That's why when I mix, let's say my kick drum and my bass guitar, I make sure that my kick will dominate in the super sub range, like below 50 Hertz or below 60 Hertz. And my bass will sit a little above that. And then my guitar's above that, so on and so forth. So with that being said, if you have three different bass guitars all playing at the same time, what I would do is this. Pick one bass to sit in the sub range, like 60 hertz to 70 hertz to 100 hertz. And then your other two bass guitars that are on top of that roll off maybe up to 100 and even up to like the lower mids, like 250, because you can't have them all be heard and crammed in that super sub range, at least in my opinion, and again, in my experience. Now, you also mentioned in your email, if I'm not mistaken, that there will be sections of the song that, for example, you'll have your P bass going, and then other sections that'll be the jazz bass, and then other sections that will be the Rickenbacker. So in other words, they're not gonna all be playing at the same time. If this is the case, this is a lot more straightforward. I would simply just roll them all off at the same point in the low end so they're all taking up the same space because they're not all playing at the same time and just EQ and compress as necessary and as you see fit and just make sure that level wise nothing drops out when a certain section of the song will kick in. So if you have your P bass maybe you know sitting a little lower than your jazz bass, if the P bass kicks in you don't want the low end to drop out from your mix. But again, that's completely different than having them all play at the same time. So hopefully I'm understanding your question correctly. Excellent question and let me know how that works out for you. Okay, our next question here comes from Chad. Bobby, hey brother. I have a question. I was tampering with gluing my mix together using an SSL compressor, but for some reason it took away way too much dynamic range and killed the stereo field for guitars. I tried moving settings all over the place and nothing helped. I ended up using a tape emulation instead on my master bus and it brought sheen and kept space. Am I doing it wrong? By the way, I mixed into the SSL on my master and was super aggravated with balance. Once taken off, it was like the blanket was lifted from on top and there was more clarity and stereo field. Thanks, man. Chad. Okay, well, Chad, what you're describing sounds like to me when you apply your SSL bus compressor just a little too late in the mix. Now, I know you said that you're mixing through it. Um, when I say mix through it, I mean you have it on really, really, really early in the mixing stage. For me, I like to get a rough balance going with just using high pass filters and a rough level, then I immediately will apply my bus compressor. Now, with that being said, there are a few other things that you could take into account. Maybe you have too quick of an attack time. If your attack is too quick, it's gonna make the compressor pump. And I find that when the attack is fast or too fast, it will darken up the sound of my mix. Also, your release might be too long, which will kind of do the same thing. And also, if you're using a ratio that's too high, it's just too much compression, at least in my opinion. For me personally, and again, this is my own personal taste, my own personal opinion, I like to use a very slow attack. I also like to use the auto release setting. I find it's really, really transparent and a ratio of just two 
to one. Now, there are people out there that have great success with a four to one ratio, but for me, I feel it pumps just a little too much, so I like a two to one ratio on my SSL bus compressor. So again, make sure you're using a slower attack, a quicker release or an auto release, and a low ratio like two to one. And let me know how that works out for you. I think you'll really dig the results. Thank you for your question. It was a good one. Okay, our next question here comes from Mr. Kirk. Hey, Bobby, love everything you do and I've gotten a lot of great tips from you. Anyhow, my question is simple. For mixing guitars in Reaper with amp sims, after dialing in the amp sim, after recording the guitars both left and right, should I turn off the parent track on the tracks with the amp sims that are under the track I've made label guitar one bus? Not sure if I'm just hearing things, but with those parent tracks on, I could hear some of the DI signal coming through. This might be a dumb question, but I'm a self-taught producer and have been watching and learning from you and others on YouTube that I find are very informative and work with the same styles of music that I like. So at the end of the day, does it matter if you turn those parent tracks off on the tracks under the guitar bus whose parent track is on? Okay, well, Kirk, this is an excellent question and it's something that I've definitely dealt with in the past. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not too sure what you mean by parent track and your routing with your amp sims. I tend to just stick my amp sim directly on the track itself where I'm recording my DI. I don't use an amp sim on the bus. That's overcomplicating things. And if you do that, you will often end up with issues like you just mentioned. I found that I don't like having multiple DIs going to the same amp sim because we have to remember an amp sim is emulating an amplifier. And when you have a live amp in front of you, you don't stick multiple guitars through the same amp at the same time. So I just negate all of this by simply keeping the amp sim directly on the track in which I'm recording itself. It just streamlines everything. It makes the most sense and emulates a real amp in the real world. So I'd highly recommend working this way within Reaper. It doesn't matter what DAW you're using. Now, as far as hearing a DI, a clean DI at the same time, I have had this happen with certain amp sims and it's simply an issue of having the blend set right on your amp sim. Somewhere in your chain, it could be in your amp sim or it could be in your routing, you have the DI coming through and you have to make sure that you get rid of that. I would start at the amp sim and look to see if there's a wet dry knob and make sure it's 100% wet. And if it is due to your routing, I'd highly recommend simplifying your routing. And again, just take that amp sim and stick it directly on the track that you're recording into. There's no reason to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Excellent question, Kirk. And let me know if that solves your issue. Now on the topic of guitars and you haven't done so already, you could download my free IR Octopack. Eight different impulse responses, four different microphones, two mic placements, per microphone on my oversized Mesa Boogie Cab loaded with V30 speakers. I give you IRs of two SM57s, two SM81s, two Sennheiser E609s, as well as an Electro Voice RE16. So if you're working with amp sims and you're struggling dialing in a great tone at the source with your amp sim, definitely give these impulse responses a shot. I think you'll dig them. There's a link below in this video's description to the pack. It's absolutely free. You can download it right now. Okay, and our final question comes from Phil. With all of the emphasis in your videos about getting extremely consistent bass levels for clarity in the low end, and so that the bass can properly serve as a foundational element of a well-balanced mix, what do you do when you need the bass to come out of the mix a bit more without throwing everything off? All I could think of is really finicky EQ automation and maybe automating in a sidechain compressor to duck the guitars or something, but is there a more simple and elegant way so much like with the rest of your tips? Cheers, Phil. Okay, well, Phil. Excellent, excellent question. And uh, I definitely should be making more videos on this topic because it's something that we all face. I just want to say this. You don't have to overcomplicate the process. You don't have to use crazy EQ automation or anything like that. Your best friend here is definitely going to be volume automation. And your second best friend here is going to be to not overthink the process. Think about all of the old great classic albums where the bass player is playing super high in the neck, even someone like Cliff Burton or the bass player in Iron Maiden, and then they go chugging along and nothing really drops out. With that being said, a lot of it is going to come down to the level of the bass guitar. So for example, let's say there's a section of the song where the bassist will play higher on the neck and the notes are getting lost because most of your EQing and compression is set to when he's playing lower on the neck, simply boost that range and a lot of that low end will sort of fill back out because the bass guitar is simply louder in the mix during those sections. And also you'll be able to hear the bass notes when he's playing higher on the neck and harmonizing with the guitars. So in my opinion, just use your ears and if you have your bass sitting pretty well throughout the duration of the mix and all of a sudden the bass notes get lost and you want to hear them more and you feel that the low end is just non-existent, boost up those sections of the music and you'll be surprised at how simple and effective that technique really is. And that's exactly 
what I do. So Phil, hopefully that answers your question. Give it a shot on your mix and let me know how it works out for you. Excellent question. So I would just like to shout out and thank everyone for submitting this excellent group of questions. And if you've submitted a question and I haven't gotten to it yet, just be patient. I will definitely get to it within one of these videos in this series. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of the weekly videos on all things Metal and Rock production. If you're interested in some Frightbox swag, we've got t-shirts, mugs, and a ton of other cool stuff on the way. There's a link to the Frightbox merch store below in this video. And again, you can download my IR Octopack for absolutely free. Eight impulse responses, four different microphones, two mic placements per microphone of an oversized Mesa Boogie Cab loaded with V30 speakers. There's a link to the free Octopack below in this video's description. And until next time, happy mixing. <laughs>